This is a brief lecture on conventional imaging of the parathyroid glands. All right, let's talk about the parathyroid glands. You have four parathyroid glands, two on each side, a superior and inferior on each side. These live normally within the tracheoesophageal groove. Now, the normal glands are often too small to be seen radiologically, so we can use the inferior thyroidal artery and veins, which also run in the tracheoesophageal groove, as a marker to the location of the glands. Sometimes the glands are large enough to be seen, even when they aren't affected by adenomas. Here's what we're looking for. On the left here, we're seeing the vascular structures here in the tracheoesophageal groove. That's the artery and vein. On the other side, we can make out the parathyroid gland itself, even though it's not, um, it's not truly an adenoma in this particular patient. It's just a visible gland. The key location here is in the tracheoesophageal groove, right behind the thyroid gland. So, when we encounter a parathyroid mass, incidentally, what might it be? It might be an adenoma, it might be a carcinoma, or it might be a benign cyst. Unfortunately, these are very difficult to, to tell apart. You would think the cyst would stand out from the adenoma because it would be less dense. You'd think the carcinoma would have aggressive features. Unfortunately, it's not that easy, and all three of these need to be on most differentials. Here's an example of a well-defined mass right behind the thyroid gland in the tracheoesophageal groove. This one happens to be a parathyroid adenoma, a non-functioning parathyroid adenoma. Here's an example of a uniformly enhancing mass behind the thyroid lobe in the tracheoesophageal groove. This one is also an adenoma. Here's an example of a lobular T1 bright, well demarcated mass behind the thyroid lobe in the tracheoesophageal groove. Here it is on post contrast T1. Looks a lot like that adenoma. This one's a carcinoma. I don't think there's anything about the imaging features here that would allow you to be that specific. So this one's very cystic looking mass. It is of lower density. It's um, well defined. This is another carcinoma. Here's an example of a cystic looking mass that conforms to the back of the thyroid gland. In fact, you might wonder whether this is actually something exophytic off the thyroid gland, but it's in the tracheoesophageal groove right behind the thyroid lobe. This is a true parathyroid cyst, and it looks like it. This one's a little funnier looking. It's got some areas of potential enhancement, or maybe that's just beam hardening coming across. It's right behind the thyroid gland. In fact, you've got a little claw sign here, really suggesting that this is coming off the thyroid gland posteriorly. It's in the tracheoesophageal groove. This is another simple cyst. It's a simple parathyroid cyst. And it does arise from the parathyroid gland, not the thyroid. The clinical scenario in which we are looking at the parathyroid glands is most commonly not the mass, though. It's most commonly hyperparathyroidism. So why are we imaging in the setting of hyperparathyroidism? Well, you don't have to. Some surgeons will just go in and start plucking out uh, parathyroid glands until they find the one they like. Uh, but you can really make it an easier surgery if you can tell them which side to start on. So our goals of imaging are to find the side of the disease, just left or right, and to look for ectopic glands, that is, those glands that are outside the normal tracheoesophageal groove. Ectopic glands can be seen too superiorly, even retropharyngeal, or they can be seen as hypermigrating glands down into the superior mediastinum. So there's a wide range of potential locations for ectopic glands that might give rise to adenomas. So how should we look? Which modality should we use? Well, the classic example of that, the, the classic answer to that question is Sestamibi SPECT CT. Sestamibi is a, a radio tracer, and the combination with SPECT CT takes away a lot of the uncertainty about anatomic localization. So this is a very powerful study. But there are many radiologists who advocate instead for 4D CT. This is a standard CT of the neck with high resolution that is performed in multiple phases, usually an unenhanced, an arterial phase, and a late phase. 
4D just refers to the fact that there are multiple phases. You don't have to do four phases. What you're looking for on this is you're looking for a lesion that does not have iodine in it originally on the unenhanced scan, because that would be something of the thyroid. It does enhance briskly on the arterial phase, but then it washes out quickly on the later phases. If you look carefully, you can usually see a small artery at one end of the adenoma or another called a polar artery that is a fairly specific sign. This is a classic appearance of a parathyroid adenoma on 4D CT. I'm not going to show you a SPECT CT because uh, I'll leave that to the nuclear medicine guys. Here is the lesion. You can see it's got a little bit of a cystic degeneration in it, but look how brightly this thing enhances. And look also, you can see just a trace of that polar artery coming around and feeding into the adenoma, a classic appearance on this coronal reformat. Uh, I'll show you the late phase image. This is the late phase image, and you can see that there's complete washout of that contrast, and there's no iodine in this lesion either, so you know it's not coming off the thyroid gland. Remember, when you're imaging for hyperparathyroidism, to look in ectopic locations. Here's one classic ectopic location, two superior. Right, we're behind the larynx here, and this is a retrolaryngeal ectopic parathyroid adenoma. Another classic location for an ectopic parathyroid adenoma is in the superior mediastinum. Right, classic appearance for ectopic adenoma.